Good evening and welcome to our latest Exeter Library in Conversation and this evening we're delighted to be joined by author Jill Mansell. These events are Hi Jill. Hi. <laughs> These events are free, but if you'd like to give a donation to Libraries Unlimited, which is a charity that runs 54 libraries in Devon and Torbay, there is a link in the chat. And we are also pub posting to over 30 libraries this evening across Devon and Torbay from Cherston to Chagford. Um, so hello to all the other libraries who are watching. If you would I like wish to I ask... could be there. I <laughs> wish I could be there so much in Devon and Cornwall and all the lovely places. <laughs> I know it's it's so. Um, I, I imagine that it's. Um, well, you're not far from us, are you? In, geographically, you're not, but not close enough. I'm not too far. No. <laughs> no. So, if you'd like to ask a question, um, please pop in the chat, and uh, I will ask Jill. So Jill is the author of over 20 Sunday Times bestsellers, including This Could Change Everything, Meet Me at Beachcomber Bay, You and Me, You're the One I Really Want, Take a Chance on Me, won the Romantic Novelist Association's Romantic Comedy Prize, that's a mouthful, isn't it, <laughs> in 2015, <laughs> and the RNA presented Jill with an Outstanding Achievement Award. Jill's personal favourite amongst her novels is Three Amazing Things About You, which is about cystic fibrosis and organ donation. And to her great delight, many people have joined the organ donor re register as a direct result of reading this novel. Jill started writing fiction when she was in working in the field of clinical neurophysiology phys <laughs> physiology in the NHS and now writes full time and has done for quite a few years now, haven't you? So... Well, yes. Gosh, my daughter's 29 and I gave up her when she when I was pregnant with her. So, uh, so yeah. So and, and she lives in Bristol with her family. So just just up the road as we call, but as the crow flies. So hello, Jill. And thank you for joining us this sunny evening. I hope it is sunny in Bristol. It's certainly sunny here in Devon this evening. Um, so I read your latest book, which is out in paperback. Um, and now you're back. Um, on holiday last week and I read it in two sittings it is a fantastic read and I thoroughly enjoyed it would you, you. like to tell us about it well it's um it's a romantic comedy with added drama and uh, it's, I, I write feel-good fiction basically if people haven't read my books before feel-good fiction the kind of books that you wish that you could be actually in there with the characters and you wish you could be friends with the characters and um, it's just it's just so lovely for me to be able to write like that because it's nice for me. I don't think I don't think I would like to sit down and write a book about a, a really horrible serial killer because <laughs> it just wouldn't be so much fun for me. Maybe it is fun. I've never tried it. But uh, but this is what I do. This is what I, I tend to stick to now um, because people expect it from me. Um, they don't want some, you know, violent murders to suddenly crop up in the middle of my books. So, yeah, as I say, feel good fiction. And this is um, set in the Cotswolds, um, which is where I grew up. But this is a different part of the Cotswolds. And what actually happened was um, a couple of years ago, I was invited to an event in Stone the Wold. And I was staying in a really gorgeous hotel there. and. Um, and I just fell in love with Stowe on the World. I fell in love with the hotel where I was staying and where the event was being held. And everybody was so friendly and cheerful and loved working there. You could tell they loved working there. And, um, and I just said during my speech in the, in the evening, I said, I think I'm going to have to set my next book here. And so I, that's what I did. This book is based around a hotel in a market town in the Cotswolds and um, and the people who run it and work there and the people that stay there uh, because hotels are lovely for me to write about they're fantastic so um, and it's about what happens if your first love suddenly appears out of the blue um, sort of 13 years later so well, I've forgotten the name of the main character Shay so Shay, Shay and Dee Dee, yeah. So yeah. they meet at the beginning of the book in um, Venice, and I was um, inspired to pretty much to write the whole book by this photograph that I found online. I have posted it on my Facebook um, author page, but it's it's um, 
it's like three o'clock in the morning and there's suddenly a massive snowfall in St Mark's Square in Venice. Oh wow, and, I didn't realise that. Oh, so these people just come out and can't believe it because it's so rare for that mm. to happen there. And they throw snowballs and they build a snowman. So I just, I couldn't get this picture of St Mark's Square in the snow out of my head. And I just thought, how can I fit that into a book? So that is the starting point of the book. But most of it, as I say, is set in the Cotswolds. And yes, and it's about what happens when you think you've got your life all sort of sorted out. You've got your lovely job and uh, lovely home and lovely boyfriend that you're going to be marrying soon. And then all of a sudden, uh, the, the first love of your life from when you were 17 turns up for a completely different reason and puts the cat among the pigeons really <laughs> he i i really loved the book as i said and i the scene in in venice you know from the beginning that you know that it's that, that that's is going to be really significant part of the book and i was a bit like when that finished i was like oh no well what what's going to happen next but Shay and Dee Dee are, are such great characters and, and you always write such great characters in your books. They're always so relatable and generally lovely, although occasionally you do slide the old loathsome one in and there is... Well, you've got to. You've got I'm, to not gonna, I'm not going to give away who the loathsome one is in this book. People can make up their own mind. But well, there's you, two, I think, isn't there? There is, there's yes, two. there's definitely a couple. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, did you, which ones do you enjoy writing the most, the lovely or the loathsome, or is it a bit of both? Oh, well, it's a bit of both, yes. Um, yes, sometimes it's really fun to write horrible characters, and uh, uh, I've got a couple of really wicked characters in other of, of my books, and the sort of the naughty older characters are my <laughs> favourites to write. Um, and people do tend to fall in love with those. And I've got a naughty one in this one as well. You do indeed, yes, Red. Um, red, yes. <laughs> um, and people are loving him. He, they just uh, they are telling me more than any of the other characters, I think. Oh, there's, some, there's somebody that you don't think will grab, you, grab your attention does, and you just find yourself um, realizing what his life has been like and being on his side mm. I think that's the thing isn't it when you first hear about him you hear about him via somebody else don't you sort of somebody saying about about what he's done and what is and you expect him to be like you say you expect him to be you know not particularly nice but actually I'm not giving I don't want to give too much away but um there's another story to him isn't there which is very much deeper than what our first impression yeah. is of yeah, him. yeah 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 and he's sort of a lovable rogue. Oh, he is, that's, definitely. <laughs> that's, that's so lovely to, to write as well. He um, So also, I, I think the other thing that um, I really liked about this book is that you do have um, older characters as well as the younger ones in there. And I think um, older characters that are having new beginnings. And I really loved Rose's story in, in this book um, and how she's, you know, she's getting over the death of her husband, her sort of beloved husband and sort of trying to come to terms with her life. Did you have anything that sort of inspired you to write her story? Because I was quite fascinated with the whole sort of Rosa uh, character. Um, again, I think you just suddenly think of an idea or you're reading something or watching something. And I think I've been sort of, I've taken note when people say, oh, all my beloved dogs are buried at the bottom of my garden. But then what happens if you want to move house? Do you take your dogs yeah. with you? And, uh, and also with scattering ashes in your garden. Mm. So this is, it's no secret, this is a part of this book, that if you scatter the ashes um, around your favorite tree in your beloved garden, never thinking that you're going to have to leave that house and garden, and then you do have to, and then you want to be close to your loved yeah, one definitely. and his ashes. Um, so I just found that was a really interesting idea, and I've always wondered how people get o get o get over it. And uh, <laughs> in this case, she climbed over the wall. <laughs> she's a uh, uh, yeah, she's she's such a lovely character, and I really liked. I almost felt like um, that she could have, you know, she could have almost been a book on her own, really, about sort of her and Joe's story. So um, I was quite sort of in, like I liked that. I thought that she felt 
like quite whole already even though you didn't know very much about her it sort of you you know knew that you know what happened to them and yeah and it yeah. was really I really like that you could always guarantee every book that comes out people will say oh could you write another book with with those characters just for them yeah uh, could they have a whole book to themselves or can you bring them back and put them in another book please because I want more of them and uh, and it's it's great fun and occasionally I do sort of have little cameos of characters from previous books uh -huh. appearing in um in newer books but it's very difficult because you can't assume that people read the books in order no, most exactly. readers yeah. do if they know me and they've been following me for years but uh, other people say discover the latest book and then go back and read other ones and they can find it very confusing if you've got yeah. different characters <laughs> and it's also nice for me to invent new characters each time I sit down to start a new book I, I guess that, that yeah that's the sort of I guess that's your sort of prerogative isn't it as well is to be able to it's your book you write them how I, I, I like you said at the beginning you're that you like to write books that are uplifting and um your books are hopeful aren't they and they are uplifting and um that's important to you when you're plotting a book like you said you're not sort of cut out so you don't really want to write a murder or anything you know that type of book but I think your your readers particularly they obviously want that as well don't they you know now what is that more of a pressure knowing that you're what you you think you'll read because well, you obviously know what your readers like because you're you've sold many many thousands of millions of books <laughs> um the only concern for me is um because it's 33 or 34 books and I'm probably writing number 35 now is thinking that I'm writing a plot that I haven't done before and then suddenly realizing oh, like no, hundred yeah. pages in oh no I did that before and it might have been sort of 25 years ago that I wrote that um it's hard for me to remember the plots of all my books and the characters but uh so just not repeating myself is my main concern mm. now and my editor says well they're different characters and even if the one same thing is happening they react to it differently and uh and it's resolved differently presumably but uh but it's still difficult if people say, oh, that's that's a plot she's used before. And I just say, oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> there are only so many plots. And well, some so authors plots. write to a formula, don't they? They have a, I'm thinking of some authors who, who, who each book is generally the same, but with different characters and different story. But the sort of structure is the same. You know, you've um, I'm thinking of like um, some of the books where they've got like a procedural police procedure where you have you you have your murder and then you have your thing and then you have your court case so all the books are the same they ha just have different characters and I think that's it's di more difficult to write isn't it when you're writing around people and lives because there are lots of stories but it's not as it's not as straightforward as that is <laughs> you can't keep inventing everything yes I mean when people are writing reviews for um on Amazon say for for the murder books they never say oh this book was so samey somebody yeah. got murdered and then somebody was <laughs> yeah, found exactly, out who yeah. done it and yeah. You just think, yeah but you'll have a go at my books <laughs> yeah oh, I no. just knew how it was going to end happily <laughs> do you um I've got a question from Serena who said um do you ever base characters on people that you know no, I don't, because it's actually much more difficult if you do that, because then you have to stop and wonder how that real character, how that real person would react. Um, yeah. So it's it's not easy. Very occasionally I'll have um, a picture of uh, like a, a, a well-known actor or something mm -hmm. in my head. I think for, um, oh, what was it? Oh, I can't remember the name of my book the other blue one <laughs> um, but there was a famous old actor and I think I thought of him as sort of Peter O'Toole but when I'm writing about a character I'm sort of inside them yeah and uh like Whoopi Goldberg in Goose <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I don't really know what they look like and I write down I have to write a, on a chart what color hair they've got what color eyes they've got what do they look like mm. um so I don't have strong pictures. I don't put pictures up on the wall to remind me of what the characters look like. I tend, they're just talking, thinking people without much of a they face sort of, for me. They sort of develop as you, as you go along. Do you, are you a, are you a plotter or a pantser? 
I'm a pantser who is trying really hard to become <laughs> a plotter. And if anybody's worrying what a pantser, pantser is, is, it's not yeah. do you wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> um it's flying by the seat of your it's pants, pants clockwise so the book that i'm writing at the moment i've done this and i really don't know what's going to happen and i don't like it it's making me uneasy so i i really am um like tomorrow or the next day i'm going to force myself to sit down with my timeline and really try and mm. work out what's going to happen because at the moment I, I have no idea. And that's always fun in a, a way. Yeah. Um, because you can sort of zigzag and you can make anything happen. You're the writer and yeah. you can make anything happen that you want to happen. The trouble is it does have to fit in and make sense with the rest of the book. Yeah. So um, I do want to be more of a plotter. And uh, somebody calls it being a plot architect which I think sounds really intelligent. and It does sound very intelligent. Not <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I need to get better at that. It's, I mean, it's, I guess it's that like you've been writing for many years. So if, you, if you've got used to writing in that way, I imagine it's quite difficult to, to change that way. But I guess if you feel that it's, it's time to change that, then that's, you know, that's good as well. But um, but well, sometimes I, people say if they if they plot out the whole book in advance, then they don't have the impetus to write the book because they feel as if they've already written it just yeah. because they've written the bare bones of the plot. Whereas I think actually it would be quite nice. But the trouble is I can start off on that path, but then get waylaid by a better idea, which messes up the careful <laughs> plot that you had in the first place. So I don't know what's best. I just sort of keep on <laughs> coping, managing, just doing the best I can I think it must work it must m neither must be best because it does seem to be a real split of people who who are one or the other um so I guess it's just horses for courses yes I mean I love a book with a map and in the front of the book I'm just going to show you this very lovely map of Elliscombe which is the um is the village is a village is more it's of a, a village. town really. it's a small village it's a small, it's a small town, town um, um, or a large village but do you know what's really hard thinking up a name for a town that hasn't got one yeah that hasn't already been used i bet it's really yeah hard um and in one of mine gosh because you've got veronica with you tomorrow haven't you i do yeah veronica henry yeah and now i've started this story and i can't remember the details but <laughs> i made up a name for um a town in Cornwall and started writing the book oh and I had checked um on Google Maps that yeah. no such town existed and then I discovered later that um Veronica had made up the same name oh no <laughs> <laughs> so I had to change mine from um I can't remember what it was now but I had to change it to St Caris yeah the little town in in Cornwall um but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that happened. I mean, I may have read it in her book and subconsciously thought, oh, that's a nice name. And and then years later used it. Never it's really know. difficult, isn't it? When you when you do read a lot as well, not to sort of, I know lots of uh, other authors have said they don't read their own books like their own books when they're writing because to, for that particular reason. So they don't sort of, you know, inadvertently <laughs> put something in that somebody else is because it, it is in it's in your you know you don't know what's in your head that's your head and um and what somebody else what you've just doing. read yeah exactly it's really tricky <laughs> place is really important in your stories isn't it and it's always like so Elliscombe is a is a lovely little town and the hotel and it's um how do you so you got inspiration from this one from um Stone on the world. Stone the world. So, how is is that generally how you get the inspiration for the places? Is it places that you visited, or sometimes do you sort of just imagine them as a place in Cornwall or a place? I in think I have imagined them in the past, and sometimes I sort of semi-imagine them. But um, Saint Caris is it's a sort of an a, a version of Saint Ives, mm -hmm. just because we went to Saint Ives and had the best holiday, and I just thought, oh, it's so gorgeous. There's that beach there and there's that beach there. But then, of course, you can you change it according to what you need to have yeah. in your book. Um, but it's lovely doing the little map and 
I do love a map. Where everybody goes. I always think Julie Cooper, she always used to have a, a map, didn't she? Well, I think that's probably where I got the idea from yeah. because I loved her book so much. Yeah, a pen was it Penscombe, the place that I think yeah. they were all set? Yeah, so I think that, that's where my love of the map in books comes from. So one of the questions I've got is from Ian, um, and um, it's also a question that I was going to ask you. So um, Ian said, I love how Jill writes her books um, with her special pens and her daughter types them all up. So you do handwrite all your books um, yeah. and you have an envious collection of pens. And this is very much part of your process, isn't it? Um, for people who don't know about your um, your way of writing, because it is probably... I don't know many people who still write by hand, but it works for you, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fill up loads of um, pucker pads. And um, so these are my, look at some of these, my beautiful pens. I love them so much. And I've got, they're fountain pens. And then I've got a collection of ink. Look at this one with feet. Oh, that's nice. Oh yes, I like that. It's got little feet and it's all shimmery. Oh well, yes, that's lovely. Which does clog up the pens, but then that's <laughs> part of my life. I end up with ink all over my hands, having to rinse the fountain pens out. But uh, and then I write all my notes in beautiful notebooks. Let me show you this one. This is the notebook I'm using at the moment, and it's got. Oh, that is lovely. It has all sorts of. Um, oh, it's got bits falling out. Um, oh, but beautiful. yeah, I always use these. They're Christian Lacroix notebooks. Nice. And, but I always get them for sort of birthdays and Christmas mm. and, uh, and and write all the details, everything that needs to go in them into these. So I've got quite a collection of these now, one for each book. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice little collection to have. And do, do you, you say so you always, it's, I remember Jacqueline Wilson saying that one of the things that she always do used to do was when she was going to write a new book when she was a child, she used to go and get a new a notebook that was like her Thing. and I think that's quite it's there's nothing quite like is there a blank page um the first blank page yeah. of the new <laughs> notebook that's and some people find it really scary they say oh, I'm, I'm too scared to write in it I'm, <laughs> um but you must write in it you can just write anything I really wish I kept a diary over the years because I've forgotten so much that's happened to me mm. so, during my writing career I really wish I kept a diary so just a little jotting notepad of you know think nice things that happen to you would be lovely even if um, yeah and I guess that can quite often people write diaries and then it ends up being developing into something else doesn't it people write just just write nice things in a book and then it turns mm. into be a story or a book or um yeah <laughs> absolutely um some so Katrina said that um Jill Mansell is a great artist um <laughs> so we have if anybody follows Jill on Twitter, they will know that um, Jill does also does painting. Um, and um, she said they would not probably admit to it. Would you consider using one of your own pictures for your book cover? Um, I don't think my publishers would want that uh, because they they've got experts that they, they go so carefully to work on how to get a good cover. And yeah. these are my covers and they go, you know, they choose the colours so carefully and the font and everything. Um, so what I paint is um, not really suitable. It's, it's fun to do. I do it um, occasionally and um, get really enthusiastic. And I'm quite quick as well because I can't bear my pictures, my paintings to not be finished. So I just <laughs> finish them as quickly as I can. So <laughs> So they're, they're done. done. They are very, I mean, they're always really lovely and colourful and bright, aren't they? You always use lo lots of nice bright colours and they always look very visual. So, I'm yeah. quite a bright colour person. You the are. last time I saw you, it was winter, wasn't it? And, it was, uh, it was I'm January. Winter clothes. And so now I'm all um, wearing my sparkly caftans. And flip flops. I remember us having a conversation about having sparkly flip flops once before. So, uh, <laughs> so actually, loads of those. <laughs> the last time we we met in person was um, in January 2020, which seems like a lifetime ago. Um, and it was an, the very last in person author event that we did at Exeter Library, and it was part of your book tour with Libby Page, um, who I think is imminently about to have a baby any day, um, and Emma Cooper. Um, so that was sort of pre-COVID. 
and I can't actually even remember really talking about it at that point so I think it hadn't even really sort of started to we had no idea we were innocent babes then <laughs> we were yeah. so have you missed the in-person events and and has it been hard as a writer during lockdown it has been hard, but it's been a lot easier for me than, and probably a lot of writers than for most people, mm -hmm. because I have been able to stay at home and write. But um, my favourite thing is finishing one book and then thinking, right, what am I going to write about next? Where am I going to set it? And I go out on scouting locations. Um, I go out on little expeditions looking around, um, the Cotswolds or Devon or somewhere and um, trying to just sometimes you see a place and you just get oh that's it perfect that would be lovely so the one I've just started I went to um, Nailsworth which is another one in the Cotswolds um, a few weeks ago and it's it's in the Cotswolds and it's a very deep sort of hills on either side like that and then down to a little stream river at the bottom Lovely. but the houses on one side can look across at the houses on the other oh and nice. so that's what sort of caught my attention I thought oh that would be handy <laughs> yeah that could be very into very interesting <laughs> maybe if you want to do your grisly crime you know you could have I've seen that before where you've had houses looking over houses did you um is that something that is, I guess you've been able to go there now? Um, the Cotswolds, I hadn't actually been until a couple of years ago and I went to Stow on the Wold and it's, it's beautiful. It's really, such a lovely place. Mm. Um, do you like, do you generally set them all in the West Country? Is that, um, or have you gone further afield? Um, I used to set some in London, but people didn't like those so much. I did a, a poll on Twitter and Facebook and asked people which they preferred. Yeah. And they just said um, Cotswolds and um, and the southwest coast, basically. Yeah. And, uh, and so I've stuck to that. I'm happy with that. I know those areas mm. well. I went to school. I grew up in the Cotswolds and went to school there as well. And uh, and I I just, it feels like home to me. I've been in Bristol for goodness knows how long 40 <laughs> odd years now um but I just love going back there and mm. I just feel as if I'm comfortable there and I know the people I think uh, that comes over in in the writing I definitely with the this the, the this one I mean I, actually and the Cornwall one is that you do feel like you know the place even though this place is a made-up place but it's based <laughs> <laughs> it's based on a, a sort of an area that you know and um are fond of I think that's the other thing isn't it is that um if you're fond of a place that it's uh it's it's easier to write about and I think like the west country I guess a lot of people um who live further up the country have really craved to be able to come to the west country in lockdown so it's been quite nice to have that sort of escape to be able to escape into books um and come to the west country um through reading even if you haven't been able to travel to see us so well that's it and we're so lucky i mean i'm 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 on to watching the webcams at sort of st ives at the oh, moment. Yeah. There's, there's a beautiful one there and it's just outside the pub and every morning I look on there at the harbour and people going mm. past and it was really sunny this morning, but it clouded over later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's just a joy. It's it's almost as good as being there. <laughs> yeah, no, I do like the webcams are, are great, aren't they? Um, so Grace has asked, um, Grace has said, love the pens. That's the first thing. And she said, have you planned your next book? So I think you sort of touched on it. You might not be able to give away much more than that, but. Well, the next book, which I can't think of the name of at the moment, um, is out next January in hardback. Yeah. And um, oh, what's it called? No, I can't think of it. It's gone. <laughs> um, but it's set in Cornwall again, and it's sort of like Lou a bit. Oh, nice. In I that, know Because I've well. been to Lou, I, and so I think I've made it a bit smaller, but it's got the sort of two sides separated by a river with a bridge across. A bridge, and, uh, yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, it's nice to be able to go on Google Earth and look yeah. around the streets and see things that might come in useful. <laughs> the trouble is it's easier to make up the, the, um, the towns or the places mm. rather than have real ones, because if you do a real place, then people will criticise you when you get yeah. something wrong, which yeah. they do. 
people are quite harsh, aren't they? I was talk. Um, I had Alison Weir on um, a few weeks ago, and we were talking about the sort of historical, you know, writing a historical fiction um, and being able to put in that sort of author's license of, you know, you being able to put in what you like because it's your book. But actually, people get very protective of what they think is right, and um, and it, you know, and it is fiction. And I think it's a shame if if you 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 don't want to read fiction if you think you want it to be real because I think that is the whole point of reading fiction isn't well, it I just couldn't do historical I love reading World War II books that's my favorite genre um but uh, I couldn't write anything historical because I, I I know that the writers who I know who write historical they're sort of sometimes saying I can't find out what the weather was like on April the 23rd <laughs> in 1692 um, can anybody help me and then somebody will always Really? So, yes, yeah. I can help you. I know. And um, I just think, wow, that's amazing. But uh, no, I couldn't do that. I like to have, I create my own little world mm. and uh, and then I can do what I like. I'm queen of that town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that because I, I had spent a lot of holidays with my children when they were young in Lou. So I shall be very much looking forward to, to that one. And uh, it's, yeah. And I won't and I won't be I won't hold you over any. <laughs> but there's some really lovely little coves and the little, the little church. And yeah, it's a really nice little place. I do quite like that. Um, with your so you write, you've been right. You write about one. We do write one book a year, don't you sort of? Um, yeah. So how do you sort of plan that into your life? Do you write all year or is there sort of like you write for six months and then have six months off or? No, I think if I had six months off, I'm scared I would never start again. Um, uh, no, I, I'm quite a slow writer, so it takes me the whole year. Um, I I don't know. I don't know how people write four or five books a year. Mm. So, I mean, some amazing people do that. I I just couldn't. Um, it, I, I suppose it fills, I, I fill up the year like that. But it's I know that it's easier for my publishers to know that I've got one book coming out a year if they can rely on me to do that that's better than panicking and trying to write something a mm. bit quicker uh, much as I would love to if I could but I can't as I say I write by hand and then I take photographs of each page if my daughter's she lives up in north of Birmingham now and um, uh, then I, I take photographs with my iPad and then send each page to her and she <laughs> types some for me wow that's amazing so yeah cause I suppose there isn't any other way unless I mean I I guess if she was living in the same house as you it would be easy but if yeah, she doesn't live there anymore then she, oh yes yeah. so if she's if she's here if she's downstairs with us and she's doing some typing um she'll sit here and she'll she'll type away at this desk where I am now because I sit on the sofa to write and then she'll say oh you've done it again you've spelt so and so wrong you've forgotten <laughs> to put speech marks in you've repeated that word so can you sort that out what do you want me to do here so, <laughs> so you hope she's, you, she's you, quite tough on me yeah she sounds like she is <laughs> so actually you prefer her being in Birmingham so you can't hear her when she's doing yeah. <laughs> no she phones me up and she says I've got some queries for you <laughs> <laughs> how long does it take her to, does she do it as you go do you do it sort of no say? um I do great um batches um yeah. every sort of 200 pages of my handwriting um I'll maybe do that um and then she will send that off to my um publishers so they can get a an idea of what I'm mm. writing because they don't have any idea what I'm writing no. um unless I ask them if you know about things yeah um, no, yes so. so you don't think you would ever you you just wouldn't be able to write on a you, you just don't want to write on a not not doesn't not, don't want to i've tried it it just doesn't, doesn't work, work for me it yes. doesn't work no no, yeah. no it's, and, and the other it's the other way around isn't it for some people could just think i can't do it i i think if you know i think it's i just think there's something nice about writing and putting your thoughts down on paper it's not quite the same when you're doing it on a computer i always think about computers a bit like well i suppose it is your work <laughs> but it feels like work writing in a notebook always feels much more no, Black, no, I no I, I, if I could type I would but um, I, I don't know where the keys are I don't know where the no. letters are on the keys I have to look every time uh, but I tell you what I did find interesting um, Lucinda Riley who very sadly died at the yeah weekend, that was really sad wasn't it very sad um, but I was watching a video with her being interviewed last night and um, and she dictates her books 
Oh, really? That astonished me. I didn't know anybody else apart from Barbara Cartland many years ago. Um, so that's an incredible well, so she achievement. she literally had it in her head and then said it straight on to... Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I don't know how I could... I don't... Oh, I couldn't do that. <laughs> that's, that's... Well, I did try some dictating um, software at mm. one stage, but it's difficult, especially difficult when you're writing fiction, because you have to say, um, new line, open quotes, capital letter, hello, uh, full wow. stop, close yeah. quotes. <laughs> So it, with fiction, it's it's quite hard work. It, it's made it easier now, but it's still, um, I'm stuck in my ways and I'm going to carry on doing Well, I think it, it, it works for you. So, I mean, and, and I think, you know, it's, uh, yeah, if you've managed to write as many books as you have that way, I think, yeah, keep keep doing it. <laughs> so um, what about your reading? What do you, what do you, you said you said you liked reading World War II um, novels or nonfiction? Is that um, that you prefer? both I've, I've read loads over the years um and I don't know why I love it so much but I just do um and you, you said you were going to ask me and I didn't have time to look on my iPad and I can't remember <laughs> things but uh, if anybody does want to ask me I'll, I'll put some answers up on Facebook um but yeah what what do I read I loved um AJ Pierce's um what did she write? Oh, she wrote Mrs. Uh, Dear Mrs. Bird. Dear and Mrs. She's just Bird. written cheerfully. I've got it Yours here. On my cheerfully. Shelf. Yours, Yours cheerfully. cheerfully that's which it, yeah. I loved as well. Yeah. Um, so that's World War Two. It's very light and fun. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoyed those. Hang on, let me get my glasses. I wrote down. <laughs> Claire McIntosh has got a book out in a couple of weeks called Hostage. Oh yes. That's... And I've read that, and it's absolutely stunning. Because um, when I'm not reading World War Two, I tend to read sort of thrillery type things. Mm -hmm. And Gillian McAllister is another favourite um, writer. Yeah. Um, Veronica Henry, obviously, who's with you tomorrow. I love it. And the thing is, we um, sometimes people say, oh, well, you would say that about them because you're friends. But <laughs> half the time, the reason we're friends is because we like each other's books. <laughs> yeah. I read Ronnie's first book, gosh, over 20 years ago now. Yeah and um, loved it so much that I wrote her an old-fashioned letter oh, through lovely. her publisher and said, if you're ever in Bristol, can I take you for lunch? And oh. so we've sort of been friends ever since, really, um, because I love her writing so much. She writes I, so beautifully. I'm really envious of her ability to describe things and make them sound so lovely and gorgeous. <laughs> well, you do the same. I think it's. I think you two are a great I mean, you you and Ronnie did the, um, our very first event in Exeter Library with um, she, Sheila, who... Oh, yes, of course, yeah, 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 yes. <laughs> um, who I had on the other day as well. So I've got, have managed to get all three of you in, in, in a space of about two months, which has been great. So, um, but yeah, I think you all write your style don't you and and you've all got huge fan bases so it it's yeah it's everybody loves I think you know it's one of my favorite genres is um sort of that uplifting sort of feel-good fiction um and although there's always bumps and you know bumps and lumps in the road as, as you go along generally you know that there's going to be a nice outcome and I think everybody needs a nice outcome at the moment everybody it's quite nice to read that so, um, yeah, so you like um, crime, you said, and so you, you like Ronnie's books. Um, so what do you read if you go on holiday? Oh, no, well, obviously not many people are going on holiday at the moment. <laughs> when you're <laughs> lied on your sun lounger somewhere with a with a, a cocktail, what do you... I think I prefer thrillers because then you've got the time to devote to it because there's nothing worse than being really busy and only being able to read a couple of pages at a mm. time. Um, so it is nice when you're relaxing and you've got hours and you can read um, a thriller or oh, yeah, something that really grips you and you can't bear to put it down. Um, yeah, I, love, I love to watch when I go on holiday. I like to walk around the sun lounges and see what everybody's reading and see which ones. That's when it's annoying when you can't see what they've got on their Kindles, <laughs> yeah, isn't on it? The Kindle, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we're actually we're re nearly at the end. Um, so um, going back to um, and now you're back, um, which, um, as I said, is out now um, in paperback. Um, did you um, when you were writing Shay and Dee Dee was um, did they 
because as you said they had their they both had their well one of them had their own lives one of them yeah it's difficult isn't it without not giving anything away Shay has had a life and has has come back to Elliscombe because um of, because of his dad and Dee Dee is actually settled in her like you said she's she loves her job she's getting married to Aaron um and thinks everything is in, you know as it should be um and Shay coming back really sort of does put a spanner in the works but doesn't isn't it it's it's not that cut and dried is it <laughs> no it's um it's a lovely thing and the thing is it's happening more and more as everybody's sort of on social media and so many people sort of years ago you to think I wonder what happened to that boy I went out with when yeah. I was 18 <laughs> oh I would have loved to have seen him again but they've got no way of finding out where he is whereas now you just get on the old internet and you go boom 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 there they are <laughs> but that was clever they're... wasn't it because you you she did that didn't she but she couldn't find him so what she had sort of looked for him but with that yeah she but because she I think I find I think I had to do that because I find it quite um weird in a book if somebody says oh no I haven't ever tried to look look him up no, no. I exactly. think, really come yeah. on <laughs> yeah everybody's done that <laughs> well thank you so much for joining us this evening Jill it's been an absolute um pleasure as usual and um we really hope that um by the time January 2022 comes around that you may be able to visit us in person Exeter Library again. Won't that be lovely? Can no, it would it? be lovely. Because um, <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm really looking forward to your to your next book as well. And um, as I said, this one is out now and you can um, order a copy from our friends at the Bookery in Crediton. Um, or you can of, of course um, order via Devon Libraries on our website. Um, I know we have got lots of copies of this one in stock. So if you'd like to order a copy from Devon Libraries, it is available there as well. Um, and as Jill said, tomorrow evening at seven, we'll be talking to the lovely Veronica Henry about her latest book, um, which is, oh, my brain has gone completely blank. on no, um, don't ask it's, me. <laughs> <laughs> it's Beach Huts and other, the Beach Hut and Other Stories, which is and it's recipes. short stories with recipes. Recipes, yeah. Um, I've got it downstairs and I forgot to bring it up with me, which is why I haven't can't remember the name. But it's we're going to be talking all things beach hut and cooking and recipes and it will be wonderful. So if you can join us at seven o'clock tomorrow evening, we'd love to see you. And thank you again, Jill. It's been wonderful to talk to you again um, and good luck with the next book and good luck with this one. Lovely. Thanks so much, Karen. It's been brilliant. Thank you. Bye. Bye.